please let me be the chosen one once more just one more time just for old time's sake for old time's sake no 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 After many empty rooms, it's time. We make it to the stairs, man. Level three. Get wow. In other words, once a player shoots another player, these people are, but they got raided. Wow. Today's raid three, dead. And hello there, and this is King of China trying it here with another video and we're going to talk about raids today and how it's changed and how effective and worth it is a lot of people don't actually know how to raid properly and in my old live streams and videos i haven't really shown you guys properly i've shown you how to use certain particular items and how to raid but i haven't shown you the new raid system and how to actually do it efficiently and effectively so let's begin you start off with a superhero landing actually i normally lose a lot more hp than that okay so one of the first steps you want to be doing is making a uzi why because the uzi is the only weapon that doesn't take formula shards not formula shards formula um, palmer coatings to make it only takes iron casting hexagon nail and claw which is pretty easy if you can push your limits and have a max damage collection uzi then do so because it's such a cheap weapon the weapon literally <laughs> is all i've used for a good i don't know several months and it's got me through a lot of things and allowed me to save a lot of material step two now you don't really need to do this um, but definitely take at least two Uzis minimum. I'm going to take one because, you know, I'm only showing you. I'm not going to do a proper run. And then this is also just if you feel like it, it's not a must. Where you can go onto here and give it a bit of a power up. So I'm going to go with concentration. So as long as my HP is above a certain assembly percent, I will get increased damage by 8%. Preferably, you do want to put it on a weapon that gives the building damage. So this Thompson, for example, has building damage. I wouldn't normally do this, but I'm going to do this for the video just to show you the difference. But um, you can do it on a gun that also has a building damage buff on it, which would therefore allow you to be very much destructive. However, I don't suggest using the Thompson just because the Thompson does take Palmer coatings and you need power coatings all the way up to level 60, maybe level 70. So Palmer coatings are, extra, are rare and you don't really want to just throw them about. So stick to the Uzi. But as you can see there, I've got a damage buildings of 8.6% on a collection Thompson. Step three, cooking. So with cooking, you really want to just, <clears throat> you want to go for the pizza. The pizza gives you building damage. There you go, Great, greatly increases damage to buildings. And if you master it, which I haven't yet, it will go up, the, the percentage of its effectiveness will go pretty much ridiculously high. Um, so highly suggested if you can do it, make as many as you can. Uh, do I have enough flour? Yep. If you've got blue mushrooms, go ahead and make the blue mushrooms. The higher the ingredients quality you use, the better the food tends to become. And also the quicker the experience of the pizza being made so you can level up your food a lot quicker if you choose this method eight percent when you master it it becomes ten percent step four canteen now with the canteen what you're going to find is these foods on the bottom here gives you a buff of some sort. The first one doesn't really give you anything. It's just for farming, helping you gather. If you've got a very inactive clan or whatever, that's what you're going to end up with by default. This one here in the middle is the one that gives you the building 
damage buff right not a lot of people or players know this and with the euro server coming out soon you definitely want to be able to get your hands on this food if you can increase it to the final one and the maximum one then you can get the best damp building damage buff and even a steel wall is just going to fall at your feet in a matter of seconds all right so definitely go after this the best way to get this food is literally to either have a very active clan but if you do not just have your clan to a point where there's only four people in your clan and if all four of those people are active then you can actually get the canteen buff with only two maybe three donations other than that you've got this thing over here with technology where you can increase the canteen food and actually make it stronger than it normally is so let's just say the maximum canteen food is eight percent this skill here advanced canteen will take it to 10 to 12 percent therefore making your damage to buildings ridiculous and also the final canteen buff also gives you an attack damage plus so it would normally give you just the one but if you get the advanced canteen it takes it to two every little bit of damage does help and go a long way final prep step now this isn't really you know a must and if you want to save your gold bars go ahead these are just techniques to get in to the manners all right mostly all right so vault key i don't really suggest because when you rob the vault to be honest there isn't much stuff in there it tends to be pretty bad most of the time i, I don't really suggest it at the moment i might recheck it to make sure you it's still good i'll probably do that in a different video the battery is quite it's all right it just detects things in the manner so obviously i'll just get one just to show you guys but it just gives you a number of how much stuff's in there just stick to the mana 12 bases and you'll get what you need uh mailboxes again unless someone leaves their stuff in there and it happens to be i don't know something of worth which most of the time it isn't then it's not really useful either uh mana battery now this is the thing that's kind of changes everything now if you can afford it to a degree it's worth it but it's not at the same time so i'm going to get 10 just to show you guys but at the same time i'm going to also show you why you shouldn't get this as well all right so there we go I'm sacrificing my poor 1k gold and i don't have much of it to begin with <laughs> all right let's okay. go and the final other step is make sure you have nothing in your inventory all right like when raiding you kind of want all the space you can get so no axes no pickaxes it's not worth stealing that type of resource in the manner okay so bonus tip if you want to raid with your friend or your party member or whatever there is only one way to guarantee that you are both in the same raid every time okay Been keeping the secret for a while but i thought i'd finally tell you in this video revenge raid now it's not something you can control if you know you was raided by for example xkel he raided me he also raided lee uh and vice versa but then he also had someone else from knights did the same thing now you can't revenge raid at the same time the same person that doesn't work but what you can do is you can I can revenge raid Excal and then for example Lee would revenge raid um Governor. Now we would be effectively in the same camp. Obviously, we can't raid someone else's manner, we can only raid the revenge raid, but we'd be in the same spot. Therefore, you know, if you wanted to go in the middle and have fun and cause havoc, we could do. So that's the only way that you can go in guaranteed two player and have a bit of fun. You can like one person can get the revenge raid and you can go in with them, cover them, and protect them as they, you know, take what they need. Okay. The other way is, um, <laughs> the other way, which isn't guaranteed is you just click on this at the same time with a hell of a lot of members. I'm talking like 60, 80 of your members ridiculously. And then like three to four of you will just end up in the same like grade, um, clan bases and stuff like that. And that's another way, but obviously you don't get to control who you go into it's completely random it just happens okay so all right let's tip. go take off your armor now it sounds 
redundant. It sounds very stupid. Take off your armor, King. What are you talking about, man? You nuts? I'm going to die. Right. Yes, it counts as a try, whatever. But if you happen to go into a very hardcore and powerful camp or clan, they're just going to wreck your armor. They're going to have a skill on there called Devastate. And they're just going to wreck your armor. And if you're a high level and you're, you know, you've got no armor left and it's not looking good, the best situation for you isn't to get your armor damaged and then die anyways. You might as well die, leave the camp without losing anything. So start with no armor on, okay? It's safer. You don't lose anything. You may lose the things you're carrying, like some of this stuff drops, like this claw here, that draw. But durability is a lot more costly if you save it okay so just save it just go in naked and then when you're ready to raid throw it back on and then you're okay. all good next part is buffs now this is the main reason why raiding is back okay and it's simply just because of this buff down here it's called simulation attack during the mana safety simulation and turbulence you and your drones get damage bonus to buildings. Now, that wasn't there before. Now, without any kind of pick-me-ups or any buffs or anything like that, you're doing a hell of a lot more damage than you normally do. Like 23 seems like nothing, right? But that would normally be a lot lower. Then, obviously, if you switch to the UZ, obviously, remember, guys, the ump is actually more powerful than the UZ. It goes to 19, which is fine, and 14 and 19. But obviously, you drop the attachments on there. Because the more damage, the less, you know, of the gun you use, shoot it, takes it to 26. But then, no, no, no. Remember, we got, we're here to buff it up. So we're also going to eat the pizza. All right, so the pizza is going to take us up. Um, people also forget that being full, like your food bar being 100%, also increases your damage. Therefore, giving you the invigoration, which is fully makes you invigorated, 5% damage, movement, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you get 5% more damage as well with that. So if you start shooting, you start going to all the way to 40s with a UZ with attachments. And obviously, if you want to pull out your drone, you can do. And then with a UZ, since it's just like, it doesn't matter about Jubilee. It doesn't matter if it heats up or anything because, you know, the UZ doesn't give you that much combat experience. The UZ is not a gun you use <laughs> on anything else. UZs are for literally raiding. Like if this guy had a steel wall, I will show you what my UZ would now do to it. It would be crazy. All right, so it's just all about stacking the buffs, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let me just show you the maximum damage I can do. Um, I don't have the maximum food buff right now because the canteen doesn't come on until later. Whoops, that's the ump. Uh, where is... Where's my gun? Where's the gun that's... Oh, I've got the Thompson on, but it's not. There it is. There we go, Thompson. So this will be the highest damage I can probably do, which you didn't even see the damage there because that's how devastating it was. And this has got more defense on. So uh, to be honest, to be a said test, I should just shoot something <laughs> that's got the same defense as the door, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that, to be honest. But um, basically, if I use the Thompson now, everything just gets wrecked, like, because it's got extra building damage on it. It's got the bus from the food for food. It's got the pizza buff on there. It's got a bit of everything. All right. So stick to Uzi, shoot everything up. It's cheaper. But if you want to use another gun with building damage on, then go ahead. How and to have raid the vaults. Ooh. All right, so raiding vaults, especially if it's your first time, can be tricky. And in terms of vault designs, which is going to be on another video, just look on the top right or click on the top right there where I do a video. Oh, coming soon. You know, I ain't doing it straight away. <laughs> but yeah, there'll be a video where I'll talk about how to defend your vault and maybe my methods of doing that. But here we go. We've got all of these things here now, I've needed to destroy nine lockers to be successful so I can get the new and improved rewards, which is the money, which has always been there. But now it drops boxes, which can contain formula shards, 
R and D, uh, twenty skill points, a thousand more money again, contribution and nanoplastic. This is why raiding has become a new thing and definitely thing to do. All right, so every time you destroy a box, the gas bar over there will increase. Okay, level one gas isn't a big deal. I wouldn't worry about it too much. I really, really, really wouldn't worry about it. Uh, obviously, when you've got the time, just have a little check. If nothing comes out, that just kind of means that there was untradeable items in there. Uh, and you just kind of look for stuff that you really want. Like my clan isn't electric period. So what that means is I'm going to be looking for electric period stuff, stuff I can't have normally that I would have to spend gold bars for. All right. And then what you really want to do is you don't want to start really here. Well, I guess you do, but you'd have more time if you come over here. But if you start close, I guess you could just get the stuff out here later and then make a run for it. But just the main thing is, is not to get too greedy. And that's my major weakness. Like I'll push it to nearly level two, but I won't turn it to level two. There we go. Oh, that's some nice stuff there, but I'm not going to take it. And then what I also forgot to do is to put my armor on. So you know what I said? Take your armor off and stuff like that. Yeah, I forgot to do that. <laughs> As you can see, the gas is quite wrecking me right now. And then there's a bar now. So that's a change as well. There wasn't a bar. Before you clicked, you got out pretty instantly and quickly. There was no issue whatsoever. But if you've been in a manor for a while, like I have just chilling, shooting things up, you can safely nearly assume that it's a quiet base that, you know, either not active or people are not awake yet in a different country. And you can just go ahead and tell them they don't need a toilet or a table. Okay. Getting paid. Let's go to the next part. All right. So this is another thing that's a big money thing. One second. Your manor has failed this assessment or you failed this city. Green arrow. No, I'm kidding. Um, so seriously, this is another thing that really gets your money up. Now, words have been misled or someone was saying about raiding and the changes and stuff like that. It's not true that if you destroy more stuff, you get paid more. The, the door plates that you get are based on what mana level the mana is. So if it's a mana 12 and you take the door plate, it's going to be worth a mana 12 thing. And then you just sell this thing. You can get as many of these as you want and you can just stack them. So you're getting paid for the mana, which is 1,800. And then you're getting paid again for this thing. And you can get a hell of a lot of these. And if you just focus on destroying like the weak shelves and like, as you can see here, I've just done like several shelves and you use these like what? A little bit of quarter down is not even a big deal. I could destroy weaker things and still get away with it and still get, you know, the money I'm in for. Raiding for new dollars is like your major thing to be looking for. All right. Um, or just looking for things that you need. So for example, if you needed to make a gun and you needed 20 twigs and you've farmed everything out, that's your time to go ahead and go raiding and find some twigs. It's whatever you need. All right. Okay. Which Next map? So as you can see on this map, it says one, six, five. And the one I just did was a 10. This is another change. They never showed you on the map before what manner, what level it was. You'd have to go up there, check it out, do all this long stuff. Now you can just check it. So if you're a level 60, you want to be hitting mana 12s, 10s minimum, but definitely stick to 11 and 12 because they will drop all sorts of things that you're interested in that will be worth your time. Because people are saying that there's you raiding, there's nothing worth getting. If you say that, it's because you, you don't have great knowledge of the game and i'm sorry to say that but it, it is true because what you'll end up doing is you'll end up using your contribution points and spending them elsewhere when you don't have to if you raid every single day getting those new dollars only using newsies and then getting like rare materials that you would normally use your clan points on you're gonna be a very happy guy you've just got to do it right. danger so there's going to be times where you cannot get to that helicopter in the background 
All right. It's just difficult. They'll be shooting you crazy. And you're not going to make it. But if you're a bit ahead of the game, then you can go up this ladder thing here. Obviously, if they see you a bit of a sniper, you're probably going to get a bit wrecked. But if your defense manages to hold or you're okay, or for whatever reason, things are just happening well for you, you can come up to here. As long as you know I've got a sniper that does a bleeding skill or some type of disable skill on you, you can click on this. And then what I suggest is moving, flying somewhere far away as possible that hasn't, you know, where they're not going to go. They'll be able to see you obviously here. But unless they have a skill called Big Brother, this is going to be a living help for them. So this is really effective on noob camps or new camps. Whilst you're on this thing as well, you are invincible. They can they can shoot you, but they will not hurt you. And it's a very, very great escape tactic. Just keep bouncing around. And then if you get a chance, try to head to this location here. Because this location here will take him to this island, which is just a separate entity. And to be honest, I actually don't know if the Big Brother skill allows it to work there to see you. But that's another thing for another time. But always happen to try to head in there. Any good clan will probably guard there knowing this. But um, good luck, Raiders. Good luck. You can't see me. Peekaboo! Now... You're going to be in a busy camp, but sometimes they're not going to have Big Brother on. So if you shoot, they will basically know your location. Obviously, this is going to be a bad example because I actually can't go into here because it's under repair. But the thing you want to do if you want to go in silently is what you can do is a melee attack with a baseball bat or a melee weapon of some sort. Or your other option is the tools, which is a battery thing. But obviously, I can't show you the damn six mana battery. So let me just Here show we you we got a new the mana victim. battery. So let's try out the mana battery. So it takes six mana batteries to do this one gate. This is because of its mana level. Depending on the mana level is how many batteries it takes. And then this will silently open it without anybody knowing on the camp that you've gone in. Of course, if they come close, they'll see a big red sign saying there's a raider inside that sign there. And obviously they'll know you're here, but it won't show up on the big map, which is therefore the most thing that normally lets people know that you're inside and you can quietly and indefinitely sneak into the vault without a single issue. Traps to look out for. Damn, it just blew me up just now. That's not funny. And the threat went up. So I would like to show you basically the traps that you can be can to expect in a vault and how annoying it can be if they're placed effectively. So basically there's a thing called a sound or a motion tracker, basically. So running around, so I'm going to run around this base on purpose and hopefully there's going to be another one and I'll show you what will happen. And it will probably activate the gas as well. There we go. So as you can see, if it's behind the wall, it can still hit you. And it does a lot of damage. It's now activated the gas, which is an issue. So we're going to have to hurry up and get through this. So the best thing to do is kind of to sneak around and expect them to have that trap in particular. Obviously, on the first floor, you don't have to worry about the, the floor, um, the ceiling traps that kind of trap you in. But what you want to do in general is definitely just sneak around like this and keep quiet. If you sneak like this, the, the bombs won't go off and therefore they can't hit you. And you should be all right. Okay. And um, always make your exit towards the stairs. If you're inside here, the gas can only come through one way, which will be through this hole here. And it will make its way through. Okay. So always go through, but then make a new hole towards the way out. And that will get you out safely. And don't forget to heal up. In case you guys wanted to know if I made it through and raided this uh, manor successfully. Of course I did. You know I raid every day. Well, not every day now, but every time I can type thing. Every time I can. I'll just show you my escape as well really quickly. So you want to go towards where the stairs is. Blow this up. Well, stand back because you get damage from the buildings. Gas is level 2. That's fine because we're next to the door. As you can see, look at the top left how much health it's taken. It took me from nearly top to 500. Level 2 is dangerous. Level 3, don't even push Next it that far. players. Oh, do you know I'm here? Now, the thing with players is you've got to decide one thing. What type of raider you are. 
Me personally, I'm not a raider that kills people. I just let them off unless they've done something in particular. I do not mess with them. All right. That's just the way I am. But if you want to be a person that kills them, they can be quite worth killing. All right. Because if they've got certain things on them, for example, these med pack things, they're droppable. All right. And you can get quite a few. It's Anything you can raid, you can get off a player. They even drop Titan elements sometimes. So they definitely are worth killing, but it really depends on yourself. I'm going to do something different, and I'm just going to raid a base right in front of her. Now, as I said before, there's a problem with using the mana battery. Okay, but let me show you the other thing, which is the start exploring option. So I'm only showing cases in this, but this just basically tells you how strong the defense is and what the good values are. It's just a lot of numbers. I guess if you get used to the numbers, you can tell if it's worth raiding or not, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. I wouldn't spend my gold bars on it. That was just to showcase it. But with the mana battery again now. Now, with this, the reason why I say it's not worth is simply because... It takes gold bars and with the buff and everything in the pizza buff, you can get through the gate pretty quickly. If you really need to be silent, then that's when it comes into play. But personally, I wouldn't even do it. I just wouldn't. So, yeah, just get through the gate and shoot away. Oh, yeah, with short range guns, well, make sure you stand close as well because they were better close range. This is about the distance, but yeah, it's about this. All right, just Ooh, a quick nice mana tip. When destroying these, obviously this would take more bullets to destroy both of them. But if you destroy the floor, which has 29 defense, fair enough, and a bit more health. But you got to do a bit of mass and see if it's worth it. And also depends on the strength of your gut. But um, most of the time, if you do that, you just destroy both of them. All right. But obviously, definitely gauge it by how much health and stuff like that. Because if the floor is super, super strong, then don't do it. Destroy them singly. Obviously, if it's on the base floor like this, as you can see, this isn't going to count. All right? Because this is the ground floor. So don't do it on the ground floor. Uh Okay, it's just going to keep recording because I Since can't that mana recording. was rubbish, I've changed my mind about you. It's time. You knew the pain of giving me crap rating points. I could let you live, but I'm not going to. You know the end of your life is coming, right? Okay, so the final... Oh, sorry. Okay, so finally, what I'm going to say is always be watching your radar. Your radar will tell you if someone is coming. You also don't want to ever go where the enemy wants you to go. So if you see a door, don't go through the door. Go somewhere else. Go somewhere they're not going to expect you to go because nine times out of ten, it's a trap. You're wasting bullets, durability... And it's about doing this effectively. It really, really is. And I know every video I'm just messing about rushing around doing whatever. But this is the first time where I'm actually showing you what you really need to do. I have a habit of always looking up because, you know, nine times out of ten. What the? I'm not on that. Whoops. See, I'm, I'm having issues now. Nine out of times out of ten is traps everywhere, basically. Um, so obviously I've shot up there and I've decided to go up and then use your tools. So obviously the claw climbing rope, no matter high, how high a mana is, you'll be able to get up. No word of a doubt. Don't put the climbing rope next to the electrical fences because what will happen is you'll get shocked and it won't let you climb up, which is really weird because I'm nowhere near them and it's still actually shocking me. See, that's weird, but that's what happens basically when you're close. But if I do it quick enough, because there's like a little cooldown period. No, come on. No, 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 no. See, that's ball. That is nothing but ball. I'm way far from it at that point. Way far from it. I'm so high up. <sighs> I'm not going to do it. It's not happening. And it's not hurting me as well. So it's it's like an electrical glitch. Like if... <laughs> 
if you've got it close enough, wrong weapon, then that's what will happen. It will just keep shocking you, which is really good. It's a good design. I'll give him that. I'll give him props. It's a good design. If it's giving you issues, you just destroy it. But the problem is, is it will shock you, but it won't It won't hurt you. I bet it was the floor that was doing that to me. I bet it was the floor. I bet it was the floor. No, it wasn't. No, it was the floor. Look at that, man. Nowhere near it. <laughs> Can't shoot the floor. There we go. That should let me go up now. Or I'm going to rage quit. And yeah, and then climb room rope will also let you glitch through stuff as well. So if you do it right, you'll just go through walls and into places where you want to be, which is really, really helpful. Unless this guy, this guy has designed it right though. <laughs> He's designed it really well. Props to this guy. Here's really just some props random quick evidence of, you know, people who ever did information on raids was chatting rubbish. So these mana plates, you sell them, that's for their for money. But someone said, I'm not going to say who, but someone said, if you destroy a lot of lockers and the buildings and stuff like that, this is worth more. It's not. As you can see here, mana 11, mana 11. I've destroyed 38 lockers on that one and destroyed the base on one thing. And then the other one, I didn't do so much. I only did 12 and they're still worth the exactly the same. As you can see here, you go to mana 10, they're worth a little less. Okay, so it's based on mana level. That's it. Again, I did 42 destroying things and messed up the whole mana. And still, it's not worth any more than what it would normally be. So there you go. If you want raid information and you want accurate information, come to me for raids, guys. Ooh. Now, I wasn't looking for this, but I know how good and rare this food is. You can make this food, but I'm going to take it because that food gives you more combat experience in the unit. So it's, it is worth. Rage. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Rage. <laughs> Other final tips as well. It's just know what you've come in for. Don't just take it because it looks nice on my videos and live streams. Yes, I take it because it's blue and it's nice, but if you're being serious and you need a particular thing, then just stick it out. No matter how good it is that like these trees, I want these saplings. The saplings are good, but unless you're after them, don't get them. All right. Whatever you're here for, focus on that one thing. Cause if it doesn't come up, that's fine because then you can turn that into new dollars. You are able to steal the mana thing, like the mana billboard or whatever it's called. And that gives a lot of cash, but that means you've got to resist taking the stuff that you don't really need. Like, yes, you need it, but do you really need it? And that's how you make raiding really efficient and really fair. Guys, they've made an amazing game here. They've done a lot of thinking and designing, and it'd be silly if they didn't get raids right. They've got raids right. It's just that you've got to look a little bit more deeper to understand how raids work and how effective it can be. To be honest, it might be just a matter of time until maybe Fuse or JCF does a, um, a video about raiding, possibly. I don't know, but if so, if he does do it, he'll probably explain it even better than me in terms of, you know, how to raid, what to expect and all the magics and why it's worth it type thing. Because as you can see here, I'm not taking absolutely anything. I know what I want, um, exactly what I want and what I'm here for, and I'm just sticking to it. So I hope this video wasn't too long. If you really like this video, please give it a like. Or if you haven't subscribed, subscribe already. I'm King of Trying It, always trying it. Thank you for watching this video. And if you want a raid defense design video or whatever, comment below uh, or touch it to 100 likes. Let's break the, the 50 like record and turn it to 100 likes. And I will do a defense manner as soon as I find, uh, you know, a job or whatever because these videos you're seeing now i've done them a long time ago so all i'm doing now really and truly is just they're coming out and scheduled wherever time i decide to go oh this, this feels like a good day to do it then i'll release it anyways this is king of trying it always trying it thank you for watching my video and being supportive i'll see you in the next one bye, -bye. Right, after many empty rooms it's time even make it to the stairs, man. Level three. Get hey, man, drop it. Wow. Actually, try some sounds. Okay. In other words, once a player shoots another player.
50 people are, but they got raided. Wow. Today's raid is pretty good, man. Oh. My. God. Is that person awake? Or is she just AFK standing there? Oh, crap. I'm just going to put my attachments on to fight, just in case you are a real lady. It's going to reload. Are you real? Because I'm scared. you got better armor than me, but you don't know that because I'm wearing a costume from Shadow. Ah!